Greetings and welcome to Swords Modern Space Program Season 2 Episode 4 where I'm launching a significantly larger rocket than I have done so far but it doesn't show very clearly because textures and at least I associate a certain texture with a certain size but this is a large rocket and you can see if you look at for example the SRBs which are the same as I've used so far and they're quite big but now they're small and you can also see the number of engines I think this one has seven main sails on the first stage so that's quite a lot and the reason we're using uh, this large rocket is because we're going to the moon yes uh, I'm sending a small probe to the moon there's the first stage gone moving on to the second stage with only three mainsails I must say by the way that I love this part that the engines are attached to the thrust plate adapter multi branching thing it is wonderful and it gives you so much freedom when it comes to constructing engine clusters I don't know why this isn't used by everyone all the time it's simply wonderful especially if you're building something large and need more than one engine uh, this is also the first multi-stage rocket I've built two stage rockets before but now we're engaging the third stage having a bit of rotation to get rid of the fairings and third stage is engaged now we can also see the satellite and the tiny tiny fourth stage that is uh, that was in, inside the fairing so we are up to altitude and we are now just accelerating sideways to get us into an orbit like so and now we can start deploying the first of the tools on the satellites the solar cells so that we don't run out of power and the communications so that we don't run out of communications that would be bad and then I plot a maneuver node to intercept the moon and I, as you saw, start the separatrons which will push the fuel in the fuel tank back and through the engine and then I can ignite the engine and burn the rest of the fuel this does not get me to the moon, it gets me close but I have to start the fourth stage here and the fourth stage is the only stage that runs on liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen rather than kerosene which is the what all the other stages were running on and now I plan additional maneuvers some correction first one here <laughs> immediately and I figured it's best to use the RCS for this one and then I have a midpoint maneuver because I didn't get the inclination perfect of course I didn't and uh, you need to correct that. So I enter the moon, moon sphere of influence, in a polar orbit. Here we can finally see the satellite in all its glory. There is a bunch of solar panels. The bottom half is a SAS unit and fuel and engine. And above the decoupler we have the solar panels, some RCS and communications and two detectors, one key thing scanner and one ore scanner for the extraplanetary launch pads thing and I'm going to use these to map the moon and see what kind of resources we have there I'm just trying to actually the easiest way to maintain communications with earth is to just aim at earth the angle of the antenna is wide enough to cover everything you could possibly need now we have to do this midpoint maneuver and I have already used like half of my fuel but I have tons or well most of my uh, hydrazine left. Hydrazine is what I use for RCS so I figure I'd use more of that because that's probably not, not something I'm going to have a lot of use for later. And we want to have a maneuver node at the moon because stand by because we're going to use that later and by the way look at the texture on the moon this is well it's beautiful it's amazing I downloaded the highest 
possible resolution texture packs, which is why my computer is probably plotting to kill me by this by this point, because I have uh, I'm using a lot of RAM, let's just say, and this maneuver node that I planned is behind the moon. It's on the the rear side, the far side. So I just because it's probably going to be necessary, I'm uh, scheduling the maneuver in the flight computer for uh, remote tech. So, so that it gets executed regardless if I have contact with the satellite or not. And now we just warp till we get to the moon. Careful, because I have... Well, let's just say this mission is the hardest mission I have done so far this series. And probably the hardest mission including a couple of the last series I've done as well. It takes a lot of Delta V to get to the, the actual moon compared to the Mun. Just saying. So I, I uh, correct this maneuver node so that the apoapsis is higher than I want it to be because I know the flight computer isn't always super precise and I don't want to accidentally crash into the moon because the computer did a, the burn a half a second too long. But in, you know we can correct this on subsequent orbit. It's not like we are on a tight time budget here. So viewing from the spacecraft itself we can see the moon approaching and becoming very large like that. Yeah. It's, it looks very good at this distance as well. Now we can actually start the scanners or at least the, the keything scanner. It has a lot longer range. And you can see the Earth setting below the horizon here. And now we can start the metal scanner as well. It's great! We're getting so much done. And now we just wait for the computer to execute the node. It should be should be yeah it looks like it's gonna be just when the earth has passed into the shadow. And there we go. And yeah okay we still have context probably due to the satellites in orbit around Kerbin or Earth, sorry. But anyway, we have uh, we have the the burn, and we don't have any more fuel. Hmm. And now we don't have any more contact. So what is left to do is to wait until we have radio contact again, because we can't do anything without the radio. And we're already finding key thing. This is this is great. And we are out of range for the metal detector. Yeah, the metal detector only has a reach of. 60 kilometers. I think the keythane detector has 250 or something. So anyway, warping around, I have a plan. This is to ditch the prope propellant stage because there's no more propellant and use the hydrazine only to correct the, the orbit. So we fire the satellite. It really is fired, it's very lightweight and the, the coupler is quite strong and then we use the RCS to push ourselves the last way because the firing of the satellite should according to Newton's lost motion actually give us what we want in terms of speed so almost there we go that's pretty much it right it's a little bit tweaking we have a good polar orbit for our satellite. And uh, yeah, we can see the orbital path this satellite is taking is very close to the last one, did, that is, the last orbit. This is because the moon has a very slow rotation. Yeah, speaking of rotation, I was going to align the satellite to the sun, but then we lost radio contact, so it's spinning. Fortunately, we can just uh, lock it in with time warp. Yeah, as you see on the map screen, I am very close to the last pass, so we're only getting a little bit more data each pass. And actually, we're using too much electricity. Even with all these solar panels, I am uh, losing electricity while in the sun, or in the day, on the day side. And this is a problem. I would just have to scan with one scanner at a time and wait. 
this uh, waiting allowed for some quite beautiful shots. So here's one. Really like this one. And uh, here's the next one. Just me scanning for ore on high warp. And you can see that it's going to take half a month to scan the entire surface like this. But it does get properly thoroughly scanned. Really like it. And after a month of scanning, we have this, the result. What exactly I'm going to do with all these resources, how I'm going to exploit them, is a topic for next time. I hope to see you then. Goodbye!